Welcome to the newest program put together with the sponsorship of VDOT, Virginia Asphalt, and Germana College. We're going to talk about safety. I'm your presenter. My name is Tom Glasheen. I work for Colony Construction, but I've been in the transportation industry for about 40 years. It's important to realize that we're a mixed crowd, a diverse crowd, young folks, old folks, people who've been in the industry for many years have realized that safety has become more and more important. Generally, years ago, safety was a little easier. Nowadays, it's a little bit more complicated. We have greater technologies in, involved in the work we do and how we do it. The most important component of our work is investing in our people and making sure that we're trained to do the work. And safety is an important part of that to ensure the quality of work. It's clearly understood by the public especially in the folks doing the work in the work areas, that there are risks associated with the work. And we're going to go through some of those risks. But it's important for you to realize as you do that work, there's a thin orange line, the line of cones that protects us in our work. We need to make sure we're on the right side of those cones and traffic stays on the other side of the cones and we're alert to when it's going wrong. So we can either get it corrected or get out of the way. Some definitions on safety, but it's basically controlling the hazards that are in the workplace. Knowing what can go wrong and knowing how to fix it or how to prevent it. Mitigating the risk is what safety is all about. Back in the early 1900s, unions were formed to create some protection for employees from safety to fair labor acts. In the 1970s, OSHA was created and that began to set some building blocks for the rules and regulations that are enacted by Congress and it comes from the experience of previous workers and the injuries and accidents that were being duplicated across industries or even within Pacific industries. So that's where the rules came from. It's not because somebody just said let's make everybody wear hard hats we got enough people with head traumas to create the need for wearing hard hats. Again, we're going to talk about safety and its relationship to what you do in your field work and the application of laying asphalt or chip sealing or whatever the specific activity that you're doing, how the daily routine breaks down to maintaining equipment and how to do that safely, to the different seasonal applications when we have different weather influences and that kind of stuff, to the reconditioning and rehab that usually takes place more in the off season, or can sometimes take a place mid season depending on the use and abuse of equipment. But we wanna make sure we know and recognize those hazards and prevent those injuries. Safety rules, according to what I do from a safety standpoint, I try to teach it, make people understand what they're doing, try to make sure it's preached through every level of management all the way down to the first line, the reason why we do things. We live it, we wear it, and that also goes from managers and inspectors coming on the, on the job site. Everybody's got their hard hats, everybody's got their vests. I try to make it fun. It's not always uh, being the hammer or being the wall to stop it, but it's trying to encourage people to do things the, the right way. Um, one of the things I've done recently in, in the workplace is, you know the uh, shade preventers you put on your hard hats? Hangs off the back of your hard hats. When we first started with those, I called them redneck preventers. And as it grew, more and more people enjoyed it because it had a little nickname to it. Um, and it works across everything. So if you try to make it fun, try to make it interesting, you have greater successes. And if worse comes to worse, as a safety professional, I'm also the wall, the hammer that will crack down to make sure that you always will perform safely. You got to know your work, know how it applies from the first minute you get on the job site to what's going to be taking place all day long. 
how it's staged, how it's choreographed through the day in making sure you're meeting the production, the equipment's coming in, the supplies and materials are coming in, and the team is made up of lots of different folks. You have inspectors looking after one thing, you have supervisors trying to make sure production is going on, and everybody is part of a team. You can't have success unless you have success with the entire team. It's a group effort in everything that we do. So you know how the sequence of work goes. From getting it from the staging area out to the field and laying it out, you want to make sure it comes out as a train. That's going to actually be the production train. You don't want to have a lot of crisscrossing going on. You want to look at what's going on in your environment. What's overhead? What's down on the ground? Manholes, wires, tree limbs, all those kinds of things. You want to understand what the risks are, what the hazards are around that work environment, and how we can mitigate it. Do we need to place a cone by it? Do we need to mark it in pink paint or do something to make sure everybody identifies it? And the key is, we talk about it. We have, whether you call it a JHA, a morning huddle, anything, you kind of go through what the day's work is going to be and identify anything that's significant of that work environment for that day. Work area protection, your traffic control, is a major key in making sure everything works according to plan. So knowing how to lay out traffic control, the sequence it, it performs, and making sure that's your communication tool to the general public and to the driving public of what to expect before they get to see you on the roadway. The signs, the cones, all precipitate an action on their part, and we gotta make sure that that's all communicated so by the time they got to you, they're either in single file or know you're up there and can avoid any problems. Understand there's a big difference between orange lights and blue and red lights. Blue and red gets a whole lot more respect than orange lights. Orange lights is an interruption in the motorist's view of things. They're trying to get to school, go to the market, get their hair done, go grocery shopping, whatever it takes. And orange lights means there's an interruption in that. So make sure you understand that. And in our traffic control, we lay it out well enough, organized, and according to the methodology based on the speed limits and all that, that we get a good layout that communicates that so they can breeze through without any problem. And again, we go, go back to the basics because safety is basically common sense. There's some rules, there's company policies, there's contract regulations and specifications that we all have to follow. But the biggest thing you need to bring to the job every day is your brain. Think about what you're doing as you're doing it or before it's done to make sure you identify those risks. Don't put your hands in some place where the fingers are going to get squashed. You know, don't bend over, bend at your knees and pick up things. Simple things, common sense rules applies. We want everything safe. We want to recognize those hazards. We want to correct those hazards. If for some reason people aren't paying attention to your traffic control, what can you do to improve it? Add a message board, increase the spacing on signs, tighten up the spacing on cones. All those kinds of things need to be looked at if there's problems in that communications and recognizing what's a safe operation. Mitigate those hazards. OSHA has this whole thing about the, the triangle and the engineered administration and elimination of hazards. And that's where we come up with our safety rules and regulations. Okay, you always wear a hard hat, you always wear a traffic vest, you always have your steel-toed shoes on. Okay? The idea that we communicate everything about the work environment and what's the ex expectations. We use two-way radios to communicate with different ends of the paving train. 
or pilot operations, or even CB radios and truckers who are bringing your materials out to you. Communications is a key. It's a common theme on, on safety. You have to communicate to understand the expectations to be able to organize and carry through the mission of today's work. Interesting little side note, nice, neat traffic control, signs are put out, cones, looks nice. See the message board? Again, make it fun. You gotta be careful with what you're dealing with with the public nowadays. This message on a message board will probably get called into headquarters really quickly that you're making fun of your construction and the interruption of traffic. But make your work fun. And I can't stress the importance again of traffic control. There's a way to put it up. There's a way to take it down. You got to be organized about it and you got to know what to do. You can't put the green guy out there doing traffic control. It's not unheard of to have a green guy picking up the wrong end of traffic control at the end of the day and you're having all that traffic come down on the road right in front of you. So make sure that people are trained and understand there's a way to put it out safely. There's a way to take it down safely. Make sure you're using your crash cushions as they're supposed to be and that you have always the professionalism to make sure that you're doing it right. Okay, and sometimes it gets repetitive. We're doing the same traffic control on the same roadway day after day after day. Remember, don't get complacent. Complacency can hurt, can kill you, okay? Remember our work environment is dangerous, not only in the equipment that we operate every day, but the idea that we're having these speeding bullets go by us, whether it's 5,000 pound passenger car or an 80,000 pound truck, okay? If we're on the interstates, they're passing us at 70 miles an hour. If they're on local roads, maybe they're slowing down a little bit. But make sure you do it right and everything performs according to design. Okay, we talk about mitigating those hazards. Again, remember where and how things have to parade out in the roadway so that they're in the right order as they come out. No sense putting the roller out before the paver. The paver should go out before the roller. Simple things, common sense, it applies. So should some other things, but com here is complacency again. The rule generally is after you drop your load, you lower your bed before you move the truck, okay? Simple things, but we take it for granted. We get in a hurry, but let's slow down. Whether you have a start card, a stop card, a focus program, any of those things, you stop, you think, you access, you review, and you talk about what goes on. So you have repetitive actions going on reminding you of those safety applications on what you're doing and how you're getting it done. Okay? Communications is a tool. Out there in the work environment, you've got machines buzzing along. Okay? Make sure you have common hand signals that everybody's used to. You're using your radios. You get eye contact with people if you're flagging. They recognize that you're wanting them to stop. So if you don't get eye contact, you know, move around a little bit, make them get in contact with you. And if there's something going wrong, there's the old yelling, there's whistles we can get, all kinds of different kinds of programs to make sure things don't get wrong. We even put air horns on rollers. So they're the last thing in the paving operation. If something's going wrong at the tail end, that roller operator can hit that air horn in a moment everybody's up looking. But you gotta pay attention. Walk through each step. Make sure we're doing things right, okay? And with anything, we need to review, okay? You lay out traffic control. Somebody should do a ride through it after it's laid out. Make sure it sees and is seen as well as it's intended. 
And again, the graphic kind of shows simple little things, telephone poles, mailboxes. It's more of an urban environment. We get to the rural environment. You want to make sure your curves and your hills and your tree limbs and your brushes and blocking. So we get those final adjustments made. The latest bug is on the silica. We've done a lot of controls on silica. Most of our equipment is now silica free, if not silica minimized. Okay. And this happens just to be a, a plant report. We partnered with Vosch when the silica rules first came out to see how our plant operations were or were not needed protection. And we put monitors on everybody working at the plant, from the guy on the ground to the guy in the loader to the guy in the box in the control room. And out of all those testing sites, they all had pumps on them. At the end of the day, we had minimum exposure to silica, which gave us the ability, unless something's going wrong in the plant, that we didn't need to wear respirators all the time. But silica is a real thing. If you've been in industry for years, you need to protect yourself. If you're coming in brand new, understand that the simplest things in life nowadays get more complicated over time. Silica doesn't hurt you today. Silica will hurt you years down the road when all of a sudden you have trouble breathing. Okay, it's one of those things that build, we build up tolerances for until all of a sudden it starts affecting our ability to live our life every day. There's other things in our environment, noise. Okay, you get old, you've worked in construction, you get a little bit hard of hearing. My wife swore I had a hearing problem. Sent me to have a hearing test. The hearing test proved that I didn't have a hearing problem. I had no loss of hearing. But I have this one little pitch of my wife's voice that seems to be dipped down. But I don't have a hearing problem, it's just a voice pitch. It's my joke for today. Okay? But again, we talk about the simple measures. We talk about the hearing. You can get earplugs for pennies. Okay? And if you're working in noisy environments, the idea that you're protecting yourself not so much for today, but for tomorrow. The same thing with safety glasses. They're only a couple bucks. But what's it worth to you to be able to see your kid playing sports? To see the smiles of loved ones? To see those little things that make a difference in life with just a simple fix? And it's as simple as putting the safety glasses on. We work out there by the roads every day. You can't tell me it's not dusty and dirty because you've got vehicles traveling by you at 50, 60, 70 miles an hour creating dust and turbulence. That stuff flushes in our eyes, okay? There's actually, if you wanna YouTube Tony Crow in your spare time, guy had an eye accident and went blind. The importance of the message is it didn't just affect him. It affected family, it affected friends, it affected his employment opportunities, and the circle just gets wider and wider and wider because it's just not his eyes he's got lost. Now all of a sudden, he has to have somebody walk with him. He can't see his kids playing sports. Okay? He can't get around like he used to. He doesn't have the hobbies he used to be able to do because he needed his eyesight to do those things. A simple thing, safety glasses, earplugs, your personal protective equipment. Use it, not just for today, but for every day, and whether it's 40 years or 50 years or whatever you're going to make a career out of, make it apply to everything you do. This is something we started. We have the safety equipment up on a wall, free for anybody. My philosophy is if I give you safety glasses to take home and mow your lawn, you're probably going to use them. And if you use them at home, the likelihood of you using them when you're supposed to be at work 
is even twice as much. Same thing with earplugs. They're giveaways. So if you use them when you're mowing grass or doing something around the house, you're protecting yourself there. You're damn sure going to protect yourself here when you get to work. So use what you have in safety equipment, and not just necessarily for work, but in everything you do. Understanding those kinds of things, the ears, the eyes, last you a lifetime. And if you lose them, you can lose them for the rest of the lifetime. And that a lot of things we do can it literally cost you your life. So if you start getting into the attitude of using your safety every day, using your brain, in everything you do, thinking about what you're doing, thinking about the reaction it takes, you'll be a lot more successful, okay? We talk about these things, we talk about our safety equipment, we talk about our PPE, but it's only you that can apply it and make sure it works for you, okay? Make sure you're looking around to see the benefit of wearing your equipment, using your equipment, applying your common sense safety knowledge and producing the goal of being able to go home with all your fingers and toes. I hope you enjoyed today's session. I hope you spend a lifetime with opportunity to learn from each other. Whether you're 60 years old or whether you're 20 years old, we can all learn from each other, help each other, and make sure we all go home safely at the end of the day. Have a great day.